So my father wanted me to go to an HBCU, and the closest one is Howard University. I was a zoology major, chemistry minor, and so I took zoology and endocrinology, physiology, anatomy, but then all of the chemistry classes, general chem one, two, organic one, two, physics one, two. Um, and then I had to take like the English classes, philosophy classes. One of the most um, creative classes that I took was African American history. And so that was wonderful. Um, I really enjoyed the science classes. My anatomy physiology class, what we had to do was dissect the nerves that is in a cat, okay? So you're pulling apart the muscle, you're pulling apart everything, and you're thinking to yourself, that may be a nerve, okay? I mean, the nerve in a cat is so very, the, the diameter is like so very small. And so that was really pretty cool. Um, it was, the Howard experience was wonderful. My sister was, was a year ahead of me, and so, uh, we were both on the campus together. Uh, it didn't work out so well for us being roommates, but we were on the campus together. Yeah. Um, because my father had two children at Howard University, the money got tight, okay? And uh, there was also a child at home, my sister, younger sister. And so after my freshman year at Howard, my father said, I can't do this, okay? Someone needs a scholarship. and. The only kind of scholarship that I could get immediately was to go into ROTC. And so I went to the ROTC office and right then and there I filled out uh, the, the scholarship application with some help and I was awarded the scholarship starting my sophomore year. And so that scholarship paid for tuition and fees and books and then gave me, it didn't pay for living expenses. It did give me $100 a month for food. And so bottom line is um, I went into the military simply to pay for college. And so I had four years active duty afterwards. I had an obligation of four years active duty afterwards. No, because once you graduate um, ROTC, you are an officer, okay? And so as an officer, then my soldiers had to give me respect. Now, what was interesting is because I was a science major, okay, um, my uh, cadre, the cadre at uh, Howard University, I said to them, I said, look, when I leave here, I need a job. And they said, Sharon, you're a, you're a science major you want a guaranteed job, then go into field artillery. Because field artillery, even though it's um, mostly a male-oriented um, environment, they need um, people to, they needed people to operate the computers and the control centers and all of that. And so me deciding to, um, uh, to, uh, have field artillery as my first option, I got it immediately. Four years active, and then it was two, what I thought was two years reserve. But then um, I wrote a letter to uh, St. Louis where they keep the military records, and I said to them like about eight years after Howard, I said I would like to sever all ties with the military. And I nicely received a letter that said, you were an army officer, there is no severing ties. You will always be an Army officer and we can activate you at any time. And so when I was in graduate school, my second year of graduate school, working on my master's, I got a call from St. Louis saying, we need you on active duty right now. And I was like, I'm in, I'm in my second year of graduate school. And so the gentleman said to me, okay, right now it's an option, but later on it may not be. Military experience was interesting. I was a platoon leader. I was a, I, I am a female. I had about a hundred men that had to answer to me. And so it was interesting because they had to respect me as an officer, but then, you know, they giggled because she, she's a female. Why do we have to listen up? Um, but there was no instance in which I was disrespected. And so, um, there were about four females 
uh, three female officers that were also field artillery. And so when we used to go to the officers club every Friday night, you have a, an auditorium this big or a club that is this big and there's four females in that room. So, it, you know, you, you get used to it. You get used to it. Of course, there were a lot of male uh, officers and so, you know, they kind of acted like our big brothers. And so, you know, it was wonderful. The money was wonderful. I was not married. I had no, no children. And so I was able to live in an apartment that I liked living in. And initially, I actually stayed on the post for about a year. And I had a maid service. It was wonderful, okay? And so I was going through officer basic course. But then I was dealing with the Lance Missile System. So the Lance Missile course was about 10 weeks the officer basic course was 19 weeks and then i went through another course so basically i was on um on the post living on the post for like a year and then when they decided okay uh your duty station will be here at fort sill then i moved into the lawton community into a very wonderful apartment now initially being um field artillery they wanted to send me to Hanau, Germany but uh, my superiors told me that if we send you to Hanau we're trying to get all females out of field artillery so you're then going to have to come back and do another officer basic course which you, then you're going to incur an additional year so I was like no let me stay right here on the post and you all once you decide that you don't want females in field artillery then you could put me in personnel in the hospital or wherever you want to put me for the remainder of my, uh, so that I could fulfill my four-year uh, obligation. What I expected is what I actually, would actually happen. Um, as an officer, I was paid very well. Basically, I felt like a pampered poodle. I'm not joking. It is very different if you go in as enlisted. So you really want to go ahead on and go to college and, and join ROTC so that they can pay for everything. And now they're paying people like $350, where I was paid $100 uh, to live on. And they're paying people $350, but they're covering their tuition and fees and books, but not, again, housing they're not covering. So living on post, I, you know, living on post, I had this wonderful house, okay? And it was, it was just great living. I mean, great living as an officer. After my four-year obligation, by then I had gotten married and I had two children, okay? And so I was like, my, um, live, my family at the time came first and there was no sense in me trying to um, extend my time because it wasn't gonna be at Fort Till. It was gonna be somewhere else. And, um, I, I did not want to put that on, subject my family to that. Well, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to come here and be with us. Well, I have a couple of questions for you. Okay, so you're in ninth grade. What would you like to do when you graduate? When I graduate, I would like to go to college for hair. Okay, so you want to go to cosmetology school, and normally that's um, a Votech. Okay, and so do you know how to do hair? I see your hair looks beautiful. Thank you. I somewhat know how to do hair. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, one of my friends, she actually works in a, at a chemical company and it's a cosmetology uh, company in which they make skincare products and hair products. And so that's wonderful. Um, African American women are all about our hair. African American women, it's my understanding in Atlanta, um, actually put a down payment on their weaves, okay? Because the weaves are so expensive. And I mean, I, I just can't imagine paying, you know, monthly for, you know, hair, you know? So that's, that's kind of crazy. So you've got to live in a serious city like Atlanta or Dallas um, in order to make that $200,000. However, I know that uh, in Edmond, I used to go to a place um, in Oklahoma City, and she was charging me like $80, $80 a visit. And I actually asked her one time, I, she owned her own shop, and she said she had like three women that worked in her shop. They had to pay booth rent, okay, to her. She didn't own the building, but she paid rent, 
And the thing is, um, I, I just straight up asked her, I said, how much do you make? And she said, I've got receipts for over $100,000, okay? And that is so impressive. When, if you, all you have to do is go to a Votech, that's not incurring the expense of college, okay? You may have to get a little bit of a loan, but right after you come out and right after you get um, your uh, certificate, uh, as far as being a license, what, once you get your license for doing hair, okay, do you want to own your own salon? Yes, ma'am. And you want others working for you? Yes, ma'am. And so that's wonderful. That's, their, that's additional income coming to you, okay? It's better for you to buy the building than for you to rent it for like 10 to 20 years, okay? And so that is so excellent. Um, it's, it's a wonderful experience owning your own business. Um, I, I'm on LinkedIn and one lady said, I would rather work 80 hours for myself than 40 hours for you. This a lesson who just home at the scholars got the basketball. Yeah, we got the ball. It's knife through 11. We accepting every student looking for a better opportunity. Both trying to go to college, you and me. Got the math class and chemistry. Got computer class and black history. Yeah, it's opportunities for you and me. LHA is the place where you want to be. We got the blazer and the red tie and the white shirt. We looking real fly. And before I go soon, real high is easy like a piece of pie. It's like the team kicking like feet for volleyball. Yeah, they serving like pizza. LHA then caught a spill. We gon' get you there. We gon' get you there. After school, you know we in the studio Steady feeling bar, just like Coolio Arts and technology, shooting videos Wanna be successful, then here you go For I come in red, black, and green Track me, still a family team Sports like MK, we got a dream But like Malcolm X, we taking action Mike says you was academy Get your applications in now. Accepting grades 9 through 11, Langston Hughes Academy, home of the scholars. Call 918-939-9651. I repeat, call 918-939-9651.